This video is brought to you by the Disc Golf Nerd Patreon support team. Go to patreon.com slash disc golf nerd. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Disc Golf Nerd Plastic Podcast. This will be part two of a question and answer episode that me and Andy recorded a little while ago. We got through all of the questions that were remaining on my 7,000 subscribers giveaway contest. You guys submitted a bunch of great comments and questions, and I think I read pretty much all of them out on the show at some point, so thank you so much for that. Without further ado, let's get back to the questions. Okay, Roger Hasselbush. I love your videos, been watching for quite some time now, having trouble learning to do an X-step. Do you have any advice or tips on how to feel comfortable doing an X-step? Not really. Um, the only real thing I would say about that that I've, uh, I've used to try to help explain how to do an X-step to beginners and stuff is it helps to do that first step with your left foot before going into the X-step. You know what I mean? Like I, I will start off of the T-pad. My first step onto the T-pad will be with my left foot, and then I'll go into the X-step from there. That has helped me kind of get used to it rather than just starting and then immediately stepping out with your right and trying to go into the into the X. I like to try to step out with my first step onto the T-pad with my left and then go into it. Would you agree with that? Do you do yeah, that? Yeah, of course I X step. No, uh, I mean, do you do oh that? Oh, yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, my my walk up is four steps and I call it a walk up because the recommendation I would have would be just slow down until it feels normal until you feel like you can it's just it's second hand it's uh, second nature that's what right. i'm looking for yeah just slow it down it does you don't need to be moving fast um it it i, rem I remember learning the x step and knowing how awkward it felt to step behind you yeah. with with your left foot or your right foot if you're throwing lefty whatever um and, and it is it, it's an awkward feeling the other thing you can do is set yourself up in a field and just cross your legs like you would be doing an X step and then step out of it and and then work each step at a time and work it backwards. That's a good call. Yeah, like starting in the crossed over and then just step forward with the right and throw. Yeah. You could also, um, you know, you could obviously just use a regular towel, but I really like the flight towel um, to kind of practice your throwing motion. Like if, if you live somewhere where you can't throw a lot in the winter or anything like that, or you just don't get out, have time to get out to the course, you can practice your X step and your throwing form with just a towel or a flight towel or something like that, pulling it through and trying to accelerate and stuff. And you can just practice the footwork that way. It doesn't always have to be on the course or in the field or even throwing a disc. You can kind of just go through the steps until you feel comfortable oh, yeah. and coordinated with that. But uh, in terms of a video, I don't really have anything like that. I would imagine um, Danny has some kind of content about that. Danny yeah, Lindahl. Danny Lindahl probably and, uh, has. If if he doesn't on his personal channel, it's it's probably in one of the physics of, physics flight. of flights too, somewhere in there, how to set up the next step properly. Let's see. Next one, Rudy Herrera. Um, would you ever make a vlog style video showing you playing around solo or with friends? <laughs> you put the good work. Wow, that is hilarious. That's really we funny. literally were talking about videos to do for the channel. Uh, and I said, why don't why don't we ever just film when we're out there talking crap to each other? Yeah. Throwing horrendous shots into trees. Yeah. And, you know, we're trying new discs, messing around, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Stay tuned to the channel. We'll probably try to put some of that into work. We have some ideas of some things that we want to do as well, like some maybe some challenge videos and stuff. But yes, we, we definitely could do that. I did do a video blog from a trip to Stubb Stewart where I showed the course and driving in and out and uh, some of the discs I was testing and some of the shots I threw that day. Stuff like that, but uh, I did a lot of work to put together that vlog, and very few people have watched it um, compared to you know a review or something like that. That's not necessarily like a, a big deal, but just something that I think about. Sometimes I, I weigh the options: how long it's going to take to to create this video, edit it, and all that kind of stuff, and you know what what's the likelihood it's going to get this number of views or that sort of thing. Just just to kind of try to think about it logically, but it's definitely something I would like to do, and stay tuned. We probably will. Okay, Ryan Buckman, what do I need to know to get started in disc golf? Well, this could be a podcast unto itself, but let's let's see. I would say the difference between a putter, a mid, and a driver. Yeah, start with putters. Um, 
you definitely want to know that you don't have to drive with a driver. Getting back to earlier questions, like a lot of people start out and they go, okay, I have a putter, a mid-range, and a driver. I drive with the driver. Then I throw the mid-range in between, mid, and then I, and then I putt with the putter. Well, no, they're just different distances that they're capable of flying and they're different speeds that they fly at. You can throw any of those discs depending on what you want. And when you're just starting out, I highly recommend sticking to the putters and the mid ranges. I wouldn't even, even if you get a, a, a starter pack, I wouldn't even bring the driver out for the first few rounds. I, I mean, you could just try it and see what happens. Completely you know, you, you could be, um, it, it's all going to depend on your skill too. You know, if you're a, a, an athletic person, maybe you have like a, another sports background, tennis or baseball or something that could transfer some. Um, some muscle memory into disc golf, you could pick it up much quicker than other players. Remember your buddy had come out to us, uh, come out to Milo with us that one time and he'd only thrown a couple times and he was throwing like pretty yeah, far, yeah. you know? So it depends on who, on who it is and, and, and your, uh, your athleticism and, and all that kind of stuff, your mobility and all that stuff. But definitely start with the slower stuff, start with understable stuff. Don't worry about throwing the drivers. Don't worry about how far they're flying either. Just control the discs and make sure you're throwing them on nice, smooth shots and then start to learn the different angles. But there's a lot that goes into that. I have a ton of content um, that is focused just around beginner disc golf. Um, so just look for that. I have a whole playlist of disc golf tips and information. Much of that is beginner focused with me not being a professional player. I'm not going to show out there, uh, get out there and show you guys how to throw max distance drives or anything. I try to focus my content on people that are less knowledgeable than me. So I have a lot of that um, type of content out there. But yeah, other than that, there's a lot, you know, it'll be a lot to go into it just in this, in this kind of format. Anything you would uh, add to any of that? Don't worry about your score. Don't worry about your how you look doing it don't worry about any of that just go out have fun enjoy yourself especially if you're just getting started and then you can always uh learn more and get better as you go yeah it, it this this while there is a whole professional side to things this game is fun absolutely and that's what it's supposed to be more than anything else so don't don't take it too seriously to start I'm not telling you to go out on the course with a six pack and a pre-roll and go blaze up 420 and get all shit faced on the course or anything like that, but go out and have fun. And you know, the majority of people you're going to meet on the course are genuinely good people who would love to help you out in some way. Yeah. Whether their advice is good advice, that is, <laughs> yeah. that's that, the other that, thing that is, will vary highly for sure. Be but, wary of who you get advice from. There might be some guy on the course that wants to mansplain to you about what you need to be doing. And it may or may not be uh, the correct information. Also, there's no harm at all and not necessarily going to a disc golf course to get started. Maybe you want to just get a few discs and take them out to a field and just throw them. Uh, maybe you want to get a putter, maybe like a soft plastic putter and get out with a friend and throw and play catch. That could be a great way to get started as well. Also, just trying to throw it back and forth to, to your friend. You know, that's a great way to warm up. It's a great way to work on throwing putters and it could be a viable way to get started playing disc golf as well. Okay. Ryan D says, if you haven't already, can you review some deputies? Always look forward to your videos. Thank you. Keep up the good work. You reviewed that moonshine deputy, didn't you? I reviewed the classic one for sure uh, when it when it was still the Trilogy Challenge disc. If at any time any of you are wondering if I have reviewed a disc, um, you really don't have to wonder. A, you can just go to my playlist. They're all in there, and you can scroll through and see exactly what I've reviewed, obviously. Or the easiest way to do it, you can just go straight to Google. You don't even have to go to YouTube. Go to Google, search Disc Golf Nerd, and the name of that disc. Chances are I have reviewed it, and it'll pop right up. And if I have not reviewed it, you know, send me an email or, or hit me up on Instagram and ask me about a disc. You know, if it's something that people are interested in, um, I will definitely check it out and, uh, and look into it. But yeah, with, uh, a, you know, over 200 different reviews, there's a lot of stuff in that playlist. Ryan Lyman, what is your favorite understable driver? Andy beat in undertaker. What plastic Z for me, but any plastic would theoretically work. Okay. For uh, the, it, just like, the understable mid-range question, 
we had earlier, the best understable mid-range driver, whatever, is going to be a beat-up version of your stable mid-range yeah. driver, whatever. So if you're if you're throwing T-Birds, the best turnover fairway driver is going to be a T-Bird that's been in your bag and beat to all hell. Uh, if you're looking for new, uh, I really like the Sting. Yeah, that was under. That was a really understable disc. Uh, also, Leopard. Although I, I don't know how understable. It's going to depend on the one you end up with, but yeah, leopards true. generally have some flip to them. Like a Star Leopard Three is definitely an understable disc and flies good. For me, it would be the Fury um, for sure. Yeah. Depending on on what you want, I guess there's a lot of different options out there. You know, uh, if you're talking about distance drivers, I like uh, an ESP Thrasher is a really understable distance driver for rollers and turnovers and stuff like that. But I honestly could probably not even bother with it and just use my Furies and it wouldn't be that much of a difference. Right. Shout but, out to the Surge SS for me as well. Yeah. But. Surge SS was a great disc. Um, are those completely out of production at this point? Or no, they no? still make Surge SSs, just no Surges. Just like they don't make Avengers, but they still make Avenger SS. And only in Z Plastic. It, it, it makes no... I don't... Because I, don't the, the, I mean, the they make flex, the Rogue. The that's flex the Surge, Surge SS. SS was the was the bomb, dude. I love. I know you don't like that plastic, but the flight of that disc was amazing. They were such a nice hyzer flip turnover disc. Like I still miss throwing that disc sometimes. I gave it to my buddy because I was. Uh, I think I just. I don't know what I switched to. Maybe it was the Furies that bumped those out. I forget what it was, but the uh, Surge SS was a great mold. I'd love to be able to recommend those to more people, but I don't really like the Z ones very much. So if they had if they came out in the new ESP um, the Surge and the Surge SS, I would definitely recommend those to people. Hey Ledgestone, Nate, if you're listening, ESP Surge SSs would be yeah great. Or I know Surges I could get well. a Rogue for those of you that are going to comment that. You could, but but should one? Um, Sam I Spearing have to compromise. <laughs> should uh, this one comes from Sam Spearing? He says, "What is your who is your favorite golfer?" And what video has been the most fun to make? The most fun video to make question we kind of answered already. And for me, it's hands down Ricky Wysocki. And I would say Paul for you. Ah, Simon. Son, Simon. Simon? Or how, how Disc Golf you? Nerd. Don't you lie One to me. One of the two. Do not lie to me. Um, who's your I, least, I just who's argue your least favorite disc golfer? Ricky Wysocki. Seriously? He's yes. your least favorite disc golfer. Yes. That's hilarious. Sorry, I can't. I, we won't even get into that, but I just can't get down with the Ricky message. I love, I love James Conrad. I like watching him throw. He's got an awesome skill set. He seems like a great dude. I am never stoked when he's on a live broadcast because he goes over time so many times. It drives me nuts. Same thing. Shout with, out to Philo and Nico. Same thing with Philo, man. Philo seems like a great dude, but his attitude on the course annoys me, and he's so slow. It drives me absolutely bonkers to watch. It just, I can't handle it. And it's one of those rules that just people just let people break all the time. And it just doesn't, yeah, just doesn't seem to be a factor. I don't know why. Nobody ever calls time on anybody. I think the only time anybody notably called time on somebody in an event that I can think of. Johnny was, McRae calling it on yeah, Paul when he went to when take Paul a dump. When <laughs> Paul went to use the restroom in the middle of, memor of the memorial, and McRae got all pissed off. He called time, and he was counting down, making he his He might be on the, on the list as well of least yeah. favorite disc golfers. Johnny definitely does not have the greatest attitude out there in the course. He annoys me. He acts largely like a lot like Philo. He's fast. He's a very fast player, but he definitely is very complains a lot and just... Yeah, I'm not a big fan of watching. He throws great shots and uh, doesn't seem like a bad dude, but, yeah, he's not necessarily my favorite guy to watch. How do you like that? Bonus questions that weren't even in the in there. We're just, we're just uh, spitballing here. Samuel Martin asks, uh, I know you have done some, but a plastic conversion between companies, for example, Champion versus Lucid, I have no idea what Discraft and Prodigy Plastics are. All right, you ready? Let's do this. I'm we'll not just, sure we'll anybody just... knows what Prodigy Plastics are. I find them to be the most confusing by far. Oh, the, the without number a doubt. Scheming, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's basically as simple as the lower the number, the lower quality of the plastic. So like the 750. And then the G is like gummy. Uh, is it gummy or is it grip? Because I thought the G was more stiff. I don't. I don't know. See, this is yeah. See, this, this is, is exactly. Where I don't so understand do, the G's. We can we can run know, through this real quick. Goes from two hundred, three hundred, four hundred. I think seven fifty is like the top plastic now too. 
five hundred. Yeah. So then I think the seven fifty is like the most premium durable plastic that yeah, they have. Seven hundred is I think seven hundred is like champ, and seven fifty is star. So we can do this super quick Let's for Discraft, Innova, and Trilogy. Okay, hit it. All right, let's start. Let's start. Innova, Champion, is Discraft Z, is Lucid, and Opto. Correct. Star is to ESP, is to Fusion, and Goldline. Yes. Uh, Pro is to X from Discraft. Is to there's not blend. really a direct equivalent. Not really. It'll probably maybe like recycled plastic, but that's that's not even really that yeah. accurate. They don't really do drivers in that level. And X plastic is kind of getting phased out too. I would think. I yeah. don't think it's going to stick around that much longer. And people I still guess throw p- gold line pros. and TI also. Yeah, very very similar. And then you have DX plastic, Pro D for Discraft, and then it would be classic um, or prime plastic. From DD and um, retro plastic from Latitude 64 or the zero plastic. Zero. The zero, the zero and the classic plastic is like really high quality baseline. So it's like a nicer version of DX or Pro D plastic. Essentially. I would, I would concur as far as like baseline plastic goes. It, it's no contest that yeah. the trilogy companies have the best baseline. I would say uh, so. Yeah. I would say as, um, as far as like the champion, like clearer plastic, uh, I'm gonna give that to Discraft Z for its durability and everything. Opto is amazing. I Op- think Opto Op- is my favorite overall plastic blend on the market. You know, and, and then if we go beyond that, Star, ESP slash TI and Goldline, um, it, it's a real toss up there. Yeah, those are all could, really nice, and they vary. There's always going to be some variation too. You'll find. Occasionally, you'll find a champion disc that just has incredible grip and feels amazing. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes they'll be kind of slick. And But there's a lot of personal preference in there, too. What is is one or the other better? It depends on, on your perspective and what you like. Um, and then also for MVP, Proton is like a clear translucent plastic like Champion or Z. And then the Neutron is like Star or ESP. That's, that's the gist of it, though. I'll get you most of the way there. Uh, Santeri... Kiranen, I don't know how to pronounce the umlaut or whatever that's called. As always, always trying trying my best with <laughs> with some of the names. I don't I don't mean to disrespect anybody. What do you think of the MVP discs plastic, or should I say build type, where the weight is concentrated on the rim of the disc? Essentially, uh, gyro, what he's asking, do I think the life. gyro? <laughs> uh, uh, I love gyro. It makes my disc go straighter farther. There's n- empirical evidence. Uh. Yeah. Do I think? A more simple question. Do I think the gyro technology on MVP discs has a discernible effect on the flight based on my testing of them and no. many other golf discs? I would say yes. I definitely would say yes. Here's what I think it does. No. Based on my testing, it seems that the fade of the slower discs in the MVP lineup, I, I can't really speak to the high speeds because I really don't like them. I don't think they fly good at all, and I, I really don't like the feel of them. They're among my least favorite discs on the market, just being honest. Um, but for the slower disc, the putters and the mid ranges, it seems like the fade is more of a forward fade and not as much of a lateral fade. Um, depending on the disc you end up with, um, they can fly extremely straight and they do have really nice glide. I like I like the way they fly. It seemed to have an effect when I was testing them, but I didn't do any kind of like super scientific you know experimentation there but i do believe that it has some degree of an effect especially just knowing what we know about discs and how like slight nuances make huge differences in the way a disc flies if the parting line is slightly different if there's flashing you know all the different things that go into the the way different discs fly i mean just look at the different types of flights you can get out of uh say a destroyer alone you know so there must be some discernible effect. From my testing, it seems as though they hold straighter uh, even in the slow, like low-speed fade portion of the flight. They will continue to to ride straighter than the average disc um, without that, without the overmold. I think the mold itself matters more than the overmold and the weight being around the outside. Yeah, to an extent, there there probably is a a scientifically measurable difference. However, I would 
tend to believe that difference is negligible mm-hmm. or you would see a lot more people moving to the overmold, not just for aesthetic, but right. for for the the gains in flight or stability. Although or they may, may be, you know, they might not be able to, depending on how the patenting and all that stuff works. So I, I don't really don't know. Um, Scott Frank, do you remember me from the Saki Bomb event? I had Husky Puppy with me and a bright green luxury bag from Latitude 64 took six, sixth in MA2. Bring me the puppy and no one gets hurt. <laughs> I do remember. I remember your dog and your bag. I don't know if I remember you personally and the way you look. Wow. If you ever run into me wow. out there on the course, um, feel free to say hello. And if your puppy is with you, I will pet it. A man of the people, clearly. <laughs> Would pet 11 out of 10. Um, Sean Clark uh, asks, awesome job, man. Really appreciate you taking the hours upon hours to get these reviews filmed and edited. I know it takes a lot of time, but I really appreciate your honest reviews. Oh, just a question, uh, comment there. Thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate it. Keep watching them. I will keep making them. Don't worry. Apparently, he just won't know you from anywhere or anything or remember you because he cares about his fans to, so much. <laughs> to be clear, this, this person, uh, Scott Frank, Scott did not like come up and like talk to me. Had he, you know, come up and shook my hand, I would obviously have remembered that. Sure. <laughs> not exactly. <laughs> uh, he probably only, you know, did he see and recognize me there, or did he just know that I played the event because I posted that video about it? I don't know. Scott, come say what's up. I'll, I would. Uh, I'd like to meet your dog. <laughs> um, Seth Sheeran, why do you like the Thrasher so much? He likes the stamp. It's all about that dinosaur stamp. Makes me feel like I'm four again and all's right with the world. My whole life's ahead of me to be ruined. No. He's a big Jeff Goldblum fan, and it <laughs> makes him think of Jurassic Park. I am a huge Every time he throws it, he goes, <laughs> and there it is. Every single time. And it's gotten r- to the point it. of me wanting to tackle him on the course. You, um, you were too preoccupied with whether you could. You never thought. Whether you should. Oh, man. No, I am a huge Goldblum fan. That's that's undisputable. I don't know. It just works well. It just works. I mean, you've remar- when we started playing, you remarked mul- multiple times, look, that, that this just flies good for me. That's it. You know, I like the feel in the hand, and it works. I throw it, and it does what I want it to do. It arguably goes farther than any other disc I've thrown. Like, I, I couldn't think of another disc I can guarantee I could throw farther than a, sma- a Thrasher. If I could, I would probably carry it. And I seem to control them and throw good shots with them for the most part. That's why I throw it. I mean, there's not really any other, you know, reason. I also have found that there's a lot of variation in the different plastics, which allows it to be a super versatile mold. It seems to be popular, so I'm not super worried about Discraft taking them out of production. You know, it's a bunch of things going for it. But what it really boils down to is I got one to review. It was a first run. It was still the best one I ever had, and I still miss that one. Um, it, and it flew so nice. It was just a great flyer. I, I had to, uh, had to bag it. And then just the rest is history, as they say. Um, Simon Alton, what's your favorite basket? It's a tough Mach one. 10. The Mach, Mach the, X. Is that the new? That's the, that's the ones that they have at pier. It's the, where the chains are interlocked kind of mm-hmm. like there's almost key rings inside the basket. Uh, I am a hard spin putter. And those things catch my ridiculously lack speedy. of speed control. <laughs> y- yes, let's say that. <laughs> the, the, those compliment your l- complete lack of speed control. I think the <laughs> Anthony Barella would agree with me. Yes, firing it in there at ninety-seven miles an hour. Um, Don't be jealous because I can putt harder than you. <laughs> Don't be jealous because uh, I've been blowing by the basket by thirty feet all yeah. day. Um, what is my favorite bass? I like those. Those work great. Um, probably the Innova truck tire are good. baskets that are homemade at Shh. Horning's High. <laughs> no, no. Horning's baskets are not great, but if you hit them in the middle, they, they catch, catch good. better than whatever jank basket is at Timber. That's for sure. The baskets at Timber and Dabney are both worse than the ones at oh Horning's. Oh, my God. I, I forgot about the Dabney baskets. The Dabney oh. baskets are atrocious, and it's embarrassing. It's really frustrating. I don't know what it takes to get courses to be like actually cared about and taken care of because 
there's more than enough money coming in from the fees of that park for all the different people that use it. I mean, there are times where you go there in the summer and there's so many people swimming and floating from there that you can't even park. There's no parking and they shut down the gates. So where is that money going? If not to, to the, you know, why can't we use a little bit of it to upgrade that course? The T signs are garbage. A lot of the T's could be replaced as well. And the baskets are absolute trash. Like they don't even, some of them don't even have rings on them. It's just chains hanging. And like the, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I would say the, the ones that are out at, at, Buxton, what are those? Those are the Patriots. Those are pretty nice. Yeah, those are. I right. like band. I like the banded baskets. Like the Innova disc catchers, I feel like are pretty fair catching buckets. Like they don't catch every single putt, but I feel like they catch most of the ones that they should. You know, um, I like those baskets. I like the band. I think that helps to be able to see them. The same buckets they have at uh, Stub. I just like those baskets. I like that you can see the band. Um, it definitely makes it easier to locate the basket at times from the tee, which I think is an underrated aspect of baskets. Why more companies don't do powder coated baskets and really bright fluorescent colors like the Mach X, I don't really know. Um, but that would be awesome, you know, if you had more uh, really bright, loud, you know, yellows and oranges and stuff, maybe like a bright pink basket. I would like that too, just so you could see it really well and, and locate the bucket through the woods because sometimes. Uh, one of my big pet peeves with golf is being on the tee and not really knowing where the basket is. That that drives me that drives me crazy. I hate just approximating a shot. That just takes a lot of the fun away. But uh, yeah, anything that catches is fine with me. And I, I don't really feel like I uh, necessarily have uh, much of a disadvantage on any basket with my particular putting style. It's pretty soft. So if I if I hit the chains, I, I tend to have them stay in on me for the most part. I will caveat this by saying I don't think either of us have putted on the new Chainstar Pros. Or the, no. any of the Prodigy no. yeah. tee baskets. The pro- I've never tried any. There's a course somewhere in Oregon that has Prodigy buckets from what I know, but I have not played it. And yeah, the new Discraft the multi rings, I've not tried those yet, but those look to be phenomenal. Um, Favorite fairway driver? Definitely the, the Fury. We touched on that. Moving on. That's from Steven. Tom Stimak, uh, what type of shot is the hardest for you and how do you work to improve that shot? That's a tough one. I would say big hyzers for me. For it you? is a big, powerful hyzer. Yeah, it is the. I mean, outside of putting, it is the hardest shot for me. Don't know why, but I can't seem to get as much power as I would want as I can when I'm throwing a more flatter shot uh, on a on a steep hyzer. I can't. Huh. Yeah, I just I can't do it, and I don't know why. And I've. I've made efforts to try and, and talk with people who are very good at that shot to figure it out. And mechanically, it appears I'm doing everything right, but can't do it. Hmm. Can't do it. That is strange. For me, definitely all manner of Anheusers. I feel like I'm better at throwing a full turnover, like hard Anheuser or a roller, than I am at like a slight Anheuser, like a stable disc. Flat to slight Anheuser shot is not really my strong suit. I'm definitely better at throwing a flippier disc on Heiser and letting it stand up to go straight. Um, honestly, probably a flat straight shot is probably my one of my weakest shots in my bag. Um, depending, you know, sometimes I'm okay with it, but um, flat angles and definitely like a like a tick of Anheuser with a stable disc to try to get it to flex. I'm not comfortable with that shot very much at all. Um. Do, 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 do. Trevor Hill, if you could make a five disc bag with one disc from Discraft, Innova, Latitude, Dynamic, and Disc Mania, what would it be? Okay. Oh, you know, uh, this makes me think of plastic. We didn't really talk Disc Mania. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, the different plastic types. Yeah. That one's pretty easy, though, because Champion is C line, Star is S line. That's pretty obvious. And then D the line is The new pro- stuff is, is basically. Oh, lucid. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, the the evolution stuff. The neo is basically lucid or hybrid plastic, um, from uh, from latitude. Okay, this is an interesting one. Let's think about this for a second. Disc mania. I would go with the link from disc mania, for sure. So that's Tiger my Warrior. so that's my throwing putter. Um, dynamic. I would put in an escape, for sure. Mm. Then then I would take a latitude sixty four anchor. Or a Caltrop to have a nice overstable approach disc. Um, 
and then I would probably go soft magnet for my disc craft, and then some kind of innova driver, maybe a uh, maybe like a star mystere, which is very similar to Thrasher's, or like a wraith. I'm strongly considering getting a star wraith, and I hate myself for it because I really want to try it, but uh, I keep trying like different discs that I don't bag currently, and few of them have really made it <laughs> made the cut but i've been thinking about getting a star wraith if for no other reason than i know i could throw together a review and it would definitely you know people would watch it for sure <laughs> uh for me this this is actually relatively hard i think i'm gonna go uh disc mania for my overstable approach with the tiger warrior because i do love that disc uh i'm gonna have to do the luna from discraft for a putter uh, I'm going to take a Wraith from Innova because it's the closest thing to a Surge, which is what I throw now. Yeah. Uh, Dynamic, we're going to go Truth or Emac Truth. That's and then one. Latitude, hmm, Fuse, probably. I, that nice. doesn't put me a ton on fairway drivers, which is where I'd like to live. Yeah. So maybe I could I could do a, a, a Culverin from latitude as yeah. well which is a solid, solid very nice. solid fairway driver for sure yeah I, I mean honestly for this question you could more or less just pick your five discs that you would do now like that you would take now out of your bag if you had to cut it down to five and then just look for the most you know similar one what a world we live one. in that that's an option yeah there's a lot of different options out there oh this is a tough name i'm gonna say Williami vetico or vitico okay what should I buy? Prodigy BP2 or super superhero pack from Innova and obviously keep up the good work. BP2. Yeah. Isn't that what you have? That's what I use. Oh, I don't know. I have the BP1. I have the BP1 uh, version 2. And they just released the version 3 of the BP1. BP1 phenomenal. The new BP2 that just came out, the one that Anthony has, a really nice oh, bag. Yeah, yeah, that's a solid Really bag. really nice bag. It's got a a super lightweight like nylon fabric that's a little different than most golf bags you're going to see. It's not that kind of heavy, heavy nylon. Cordura. It's more of like a ripstop, like a windbreaker type nylon, it looks like. It's water resistant. Um, it's pretty lightweight, holds a bunch of plastic. And they put the reinforced rod across the putter pocket, which I think is really nice to keep it from being floppy. And it has the plastic side panels like my bag and uh, probably grip For bags, too. Yeah. And it makes it nice and structural. Uh, I have not used a superhero pack, to be perfectly honest, but I would say... I can tell too. you that they are huge. Yeah. Like, absolutely massive. So if you... Like, the BP2 and Superhero are, like, two totally, completely different bags. Uh, and having felt and used both... I would say BP2 yeah. for Drizzle. I'm assuming this person already took care of this uh, yeah, probably. got their got their bag. So let us know. Let me uh, <laughs> leave a comment but if on you're, this. If you're if given you the this, choice. Leave a, leave a comment. Let us know what you got and how you like it. If cool. you're given the choice of bags, I say either you either go grip or pound. Yeah. And I understand that those are the two most expensive bags on the market. However, they are the best. I have, I had my original grip bag for over a decade. And... It it was still going strong before I sold it to get a different color grip bag. Wyatt Johnson asks, what's your go-to utility disc? This is something that somebody asked me, I think, on the last episode, and I posed the question, what is a utility disc? What exactly does that mean? We've always defaulted as a sport to the overstable, like a Firebird type thing, but why? Why is that, the over why is that a utility disc over a flippy disc that can fly on a lot of different Well, that's angles? exactly what I was going to say is I... I would say I have two. I have a very super ultra flippy Undertaker, uh -huh. and I have a zone. So you'd and say you would consider two... both, like the far end of the spectrum of overstable yes. to understable. Okay. Would be the utility. That makes sense. Um, you don't carry anything that's even remotely like a utility disc. I mean, you don't use the Caltrop as as a utility disc. You know, it's not that overstable either. It's just true. really straight stable with a little fade. You and know? then like I guess you were using a gladiator for a while as a utility disc, but you Yeah, were, but that's you, more of a headwind distance yeah, disc. Like you don't really have I would have say a the utility. anchor is as close as I get for an overstable utility disc because I could like you know I can throw it on like a little forehand you know, janky forehand Anheuser and get out of trouble or something if I need to. Um I can definitely know what it's going to do when I throw it. But yeah, I don't really have like a meat hook driver that I, I carry. I don't find myself ever using those. I, I, I did meat hook 
anything. Yeah, really I had the criminal in the bag for a while. I threw it almost never. So I just pulled it out. I mean, I wasn't using it at all. I and like it. Ultra Flippy, you don't really have anything that... You just don't do a lot of utility type shots, if yeah, I'm being honest. I don't honest. do a lot of wacky shots. I would say my... My beat up flippy soft magnets are are that for me. Like I get out of trouble or I throw weird approaches with those all the time. My ESP Thrasher is extremely flippy um, for sure, but I, it's really just like a roller disc. I don't really use it for a lot of wacky shots. So um, I don't know. I guess I don't really have that type of game. I suppose. Okay, this is just a long comment from friend of the channel Xander Zaretsit. He said, when the weather or whatever has you less than 100%, you get home and find out one of your all-time favorite channels is now over 7,000 people who want to know as soon as they have something to say, it pumps you back up. Oh, then you too may have just had a nerd moment. You're a phenomenon, sir. Keep embracing the direction you're facing, my friend. Congratulations on such a magnificent undertaking. You're a big deal to me and many others out there, sincerely. Thank you so much, Xander. I appreciate your continued support. You are definitely one of my, uh, you know, top viewers and uh, always super supportive and I, I definitely appreciate it very much i'm happy to be here too <laughs> you have nothing nice to say about andy but that's okay um zach wiseman asks favorite double mold disc is that i assume he means over mold i assume that as well and the answer is clearly the goby and you don't really have one uh what was that a spin that yeah I drew, the that electron spin yeah so there you go or no that was a proton spin Pro, but I don't. Yeah, sure. The electron spins are were really flippy. Spin. I remember sure. you throwing the Envy quite well as well. Um, well, there you go. Yeah, if we're talking uh, gyro discs, the Envy by far. And before that was the Axis, but they just discontinued it because they're foolish. And the final one. I threw a macro Tesla. Oh yeah, that's true. That thing was pretty. You know, the Tesla is a good disc too. Actually, I forgot about that. That's a nice flyer. Kind of like a stable Wraith type flight. Final question comes from Zaki. Um, what was one? What was the one single moment got you to fall in love with disc golf? P.S. Love your videos, dude. Keep doing what you're doing. Love from the United Kingdom. Oh, sweet. That's cool. I don't think I've ever had another confirmed um, UK viewer. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your uh, support. Stopping by and check out the videos. Is there a single moment that stands out for you that that's really? Uh, Really made me solidified. I would say my first ace definitely was a feeling that I continued to, I still continue to chase now. You know, I don't like, even remember my first ace. Really? How many do you have total? Somewhere in the mid, like mid to high teens. Okay. Uh, I remember I some of my aces, mine. but I don't specifically remember my first. Damn. Um, I don't know. If there's a specific moment, but I do remember going out with my cousin, we went out and we bought a starter set and went to this little park and started playing. And I don't know what it was, but it was a, I need to get good at this kind of thing for me. Okay. And I had, uh, the shark in the AVR or I, or no, he had the shark. I had the Valkyrie. Or is it Leopard? I don't know. One of the two. And the AVR. And something there just, it, it it just, I was like, I need to be good at this. And this is something I want to do. And I really enjoy this. Okay. Um, I don't know if there was, yeah, like one specific moment or a throw or anything. Yeah. But I mean, some, some of my favorite moments in my life and some of my longest lasting friends are I've gotten through disc golf. So it's it's a constant love for me, not just a moment and it's not just uh an activity or a sport or whatever. It's it's part of my life and it's yeah. a decent part of my life. Um it does almost become yeah, it, it it kind of transcends just like a game and becomes like more of like your yeah, a part of your lifestyle, you know, that you're that into it. But uh for me, I don't think it was any single moment. Um, definitely my first ace, yeah, again, is something that, that I, can't, I continue to get out there and try to chase that feeling because nothing feels quite like a really good ace um, when a shot comes together exactly like you want. Really, any time I execute a shot exactly how I want it to, regardless of how easy the shot is or not, feels good. The more difficult the shot was, you know, often the better it feels, but not necessarily. Um, 
But I think for me early on, it was just when I started to really know what I was doing. You know, when I started to understand how to control the discs, I'm like, oh, well, if I put this disc on this angle, it should do this. And then it did that. That was the time where it really became addictive to me, where I was just like, oh, man, this is so much fun to just have all these different discs to try. And one of the other things about disc golf that I think is a really um, kind of under underrated aspect of it is like the discs themselves are fun. Like they're, it's fun to try new discs. It's fun to collect discs and different vari- variations of your favorite disc and try new runs and all that kind of stuff is, is really fun. And when growing up, I always loved like GI Joes and I had a million Ninja Turtles and all that kind of stuff. Did we have the same childhood? <laughs> so Did you have a like bunch it. of Legos too? I, I had some Legos, but not that many. Because those were those I definitely were my had, three. I had plenty. I had plenty of Legos. I had way more GI Joes. I have like a hundred Star Wars action figures or I something like that. I don't have any of those. I still have all of my uh, Star Wars figures. Actually, they're in my closet. Um, but so disc golf basically kind of took over that kind of like toy collecting. I'm collecting these fun things that I like and have all these different colors and different designs to them. Um, it's like the best version of Pogs ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the top. Oh, my God. We need a absolute. slammer. It's like a 25-pound <laughs> piece of aluminum. And you just, uh, yeah, you just heave it down the over when and you flip want. the discs. This is how we determine doubles teams now. Yeah, there you go. Um, but, yeah, so it, it kind of filled that same role of collecting toys. And then you also get to use them and play a great game. I also, one of the things that really attracted me to disc golf was my love of just being out in the woods and walking around in trails and exploring, exploring different, uh, forests and stuff like that. And then when I realized there was a game that I could play with Frisbees that I already loved to throw and, and felt like I was pretty good at throwing and I could tie together a game Frisbees, um, uh, an athletic sport, exercise and my love of hiking and being outside in the woods and stuff that's when it all really kind of came together for me plus we're blessed with a lot of great courses in the pacific northwest had i lived somewhere with you know a one kind of rinky dink you know a little wide open park style nine hole and that's it like would it really have connected with me Uh, i'm not exactly sure because i was able to go to these beautiful places and play the game there like Dabney, like Milo, like uh, rooster rock and stub and hornings and all these great tracks that we have out here. Okay. That is it. We have made it to the end of all of the questions I have for my sub 7,000 subscribers giveaway. I can actually delete these two PDFs off of my desktop. So that's pretty sweet. And uh, thank you so much to everybody who entered the giveaway. Thank you so much for all of your questions and comments. All of your support means a lot to me. I could and would not continue to run this project without you guys. And uh, definitely really appreciate everybody who subscribes to the channel and all the uh, wonderful positive feedback that I get from you guys. I'm now sitting at over 8,000 subscribers, and I will definitely be doing a giveaway for that. So stay tuned. Thank you so much. I will check you later. Andy, any parting shots for this episode? Uh, no. And with that, we'll talk to you later. (laughs) Cheers, guys. Bye.